The film begins by showing the dire situation in Ireland in the year 1847 AD. The country is reeling under the grip of a devastating famine caused by the sudden blackening of the land, rendering the potato plants useless and leaving other crops inedible. To make matters worse, there is also an ongoing war between Ireland and England, with British nobility occupying the Irish government and exacerbating the already high casualty rate. A tax monopoly further burdens Ireland's citizens, pushing millions into debt to the British government. Amidst the chaos, a former British war veteran named Hugo Hanna finds himself interrogating a young man suspected of spying for the Irish Republican Army. As they argue about loyalty and homeland, the young man provokes Hanna with his words, leading to an unintended and tragic outcome. Hanna accidentally kills the young man. The scene transitions to a heart-wrenching portrayal of the devastating famine's toll on Ireland's civilians. Dead bodies pile up every day, with mass burials becoming a common sight. Enter James Martin, a former British soldier of the Connaught Ranger Regiment who has just returned from serving in Afghanistan and India. While on his travels, Martin encounters his uncle Peter, a landlord who works for the British government, feeding his livestock. Martin wastes no time in asking Peter about the whereabouts of his mother and younger brother, only to receive devastating news. His mother died of starvation, and his younger brother was hanged for his crimes. As he mourns his losses, Martin is approached by a widow named Ellie, who turns out to be his brother's wife. She invites him to her home and introduces him to her three children. Martin is deeply moved by their dire living conditions and sees no future for them in Ireland. He offers to take them to America and proposes to Ellie so that she may have a better life. The following day, Ellie takes Martin to the gravesite of his mother and younger brother. She recounts their tragic deaths, explaining how the British government forced those who couldn't grow potatoes to eat taxed soup. As families ate more soup, they owed the British government more money, leading to a vicious cycle of debt and hunger. Martin's mother refused to accept the government's solution, and she eventually succumbed to starvation and disease during the harsh winter months. Martin's younger brother, on the other hand, was executed for stabbing a British government official who was confiscating land from citizens who owed them money. When they return home, they find a group of soldiers and a nobleman surrounding Ellie's house. The soldiers begin to dismantle the roof of her house to force Ellie and her children out. It is revealed that Ellie is in debt and is being sued to become a servant or slave of the nobleman to pay off her debts. Martin offers to pay off Ellie's debts, but his efforts are ignored by the soldiers. It becomes clear that their real goal is to make Ellie a slave to the nobility. Martin was eventually taken to the army headquarters for questioning. All the soldiers there were amazed at the weapons he had in his bag. They were clearly high quality and not cheap. One of the commanders asked who Martin was, but he remained silent, staring off into the distance. Suddenly, without warning, Martin attacked the commander. Using his impressive reflexes and flying experience, Martin took down all of the soldiers at the base. He single-handedly massacred them all and then made his way back to Ellie's house. However, upon his return, he was devastated to find that the soldiers had dismantled the roof, leaving the house exposed to the harsh winter elements. Martin's heart sank as he discovered Ellie and her children frozen to death inside. As night fell, Martin tended to his wounds and began to contemplate a plan for revenge. Meanwhile, Hannah was imprisoned for accidentally killing a young man whom he had suspected of being a spy. Tragically, it turned out that the man was not a rebel spy, and Hannah was stripped of his honor as a war veteran and sentenced to death. Hannah then was given a chance to clear his name by General Pagan. He was tasked to hunt down Martin, a deadly British soldier who had just committed a massacre at an army base. Along with young Commander Fox Pope, Hannah set out to find Martin. However, Hannah knew firsthand how skilled Martin was. They had fought side by side in the Afghan war and he knew that capturing Martin would not be an easy feat. Despite this, Hannah and Fox were determined to fulfill their mission and clear their names. Meanwhile, Martin was seen carrying his uncle Peter's livestock. Martin went to Peter to ask him some questions about the death of his mother and his younger brother. Peter was intimidated by Martin's arrival and told him everything he knew about the judge who had sentenced Martin's brother to hang. Martin also learned that Peter had used his mother's house as a pigsty, which left him feeling angry and betrayed. Peter confronts Martin and tells him that he can't do anything to help him when his mother and brother die. Peter then reveals a gun and points it at Martin. However, the winter weather has kept the gunpowder moist, rendering it unable to fire. Martin fights back and overpowers Peter, strangling him to death. In the meantime, Hannah and Pope arrive in the village where Martin is hiding. They are joined by a young soldier named Barry Hobson, who has been tasked with assisting them in their hunt for Martin. Together, they set out to track Martin down and bring him to justice. Elsewhere, Martin watches Judge Dermot Bolton presiding over a trial at the local courthouse. Bolton was the judge who sentenced Martin's younger brother to hang, and Martin harbors a deep-seated hatred for him. Martin is not alone in his animosity towards the judge, as many people believe he is a criminal and regularly hands out on just sentences that benefit himself and the nobles. As Martin watches Bolton meet out punishment, he vows to seek revenge against the corrupt judge. Martin, consumed by his anger and desire for revenge, confronts Judge Bolton in his office. He presents him with a rope and whispers his younger brother's full name 
clear indication that he wants justice for his brothers and just hanging. Judge Bolton, taken aback, tries to defend himself, stating that he was not the one who sentenced Martin's brother, but rather it was the work of the nobles and soldiers. However, Martin is not swayed by the judge's words and instead locks the door, declaring that the god of death does not accept excuses for those who deserve punishment. With a chilling calmness, he proceeds to strangle Judge Bolton to death. Meanwhile, Hannah and his team arrive at the courthouse, only to find the judge's lifeless body hanging from the ceiling. It becomes apparent to Hannah that Martin's ability to kill with precision and without leaving any trace is not diminished, making him an elusive and dangerous target. They started investigating and meet Fitz Gibson, a local soldier also on the hunt for Martin. Learning that Hannah and his team are soldiers from the central government, Gibson offers to take them to the site of Martin's burned-down headquarters, hoping to catch him there. Hannah and his team continued their search for Martin, exploring the village that he had visited. They arrived at the home of Martin's uncle Peter, only to find him dead with his head replaced by a pig's head. Outside the house, they met a local man named Riakini, who offered to help them as an Irish translator and trailblazer for Martin. Hannah accepted Kenny's offer as he knew the area well. Kenny led them to Martin's mother's house, where they found Peter's head stuck in a piece of wood. Hannah explained that the act was symbolic of Peter's betrayal, which he had seen before during his time in Afghanistan. Later that night, Hannah and his team decided to take a break and set up a campfire. Hobson took the opportunity to ask Hannah why he had gotten involved in this mission. As a war hero, Hobson wondered why Hannah would take on the task of finding a fugitive in the countryside. Hannah explained that in addition to wanting to restore his reputation, Martin had helped Hannah during their time serving in Afghanistan, and Hannah spoke highly of Martin's exceptional skills as a soldier. This revelation left Hobson and Pope in awe, as they had never heard such high praise from Hannah before. The following day, a nobleman named Marshal Ashi arrived at the horse park and was shocked to find the guards dead. Suddenly, Martin appeared from behind a door, and Ashia knew he was in trouble. But before he could be harmed, Ashia revealed that he was not responsible for Martin's family's death. Instead, it was a landlord named Michael Jim who had caused the suffering of the Irish people due to his political tactics. Meanwhile, Hannah and his group had already anticipated Martin's movements and lay in wait outside Ashia's stables, ready to ambush him. However, Martin had sensed their presence and quickly devised a plan to escape. Despite the shooting that ensued, Martin managed to flee using a clever tactic. As Hannah and his team regrouped, Martin made a surprise appearance, catching them off guard and leaving Hannah unprepared. Hobson, on the other hand, hesitates to kill Martin, as he secretly agrees with Martin's mission to take down corrupt British government officials. Commander Pope is frustrated with their repeated failed attempts to capture Martin and decides to warn Jim that he is Martin's next target. Meanwhile, Hannah and his group continue on their journey. However, while Pope and Hobson are asleep, Martin appears and confronts Hannah. He explains that Hannah's actions will not bring justice to the Irish people, as his mission is to avenge his family's death at the hands of Jim and the British government. Martin argues that when they kill one of them, it's murder, but when they kill one of us, they call it justice. Martin's words strike a chord with Hannah, who begins to question his own actions and alliances. However, before he can respond, Martin disappears, haunted by his own ghosts. The following day, Hannah and his friends finally reached their destination, the residence of landlord Jim, who was known to be arrogant and selfish. Jim was convinced that Hannah and Commander Pope were just lackeys of the Central Army because they had failed to capture Martin. To protect himself from Martin, Jim hired many assassins to guard his house. Outside, hungry villagers clamored for food, as they knew that Jim had plenty of grain stored. Hobson asked the guards why they were not allowed to go in and take some food, but they remained silent. The situation outside escalated quickly as Hobson, a compassionate soldier, threatened the guards to open the gate and distribute the food to the hungry villagers. However, Gibson, a ruthless member of their group, disagreed with Hobson's actions and shot him on the spot. Hannah was devastated by Hobson's death as he saw the young soldier as a noble-hearted comrade who cared for the welfare of others. Gibson tried to justify his actions, but Hannah and the others could not forgive him for killing one of their own. In the evening, Commander Pope meets with Hannah to share a plan to trap Martin. Despite still grieving for Hobson's death, Hannah reluctantly agrees to the plan. The plan is successfully executed, and Martin is caught attempting to assassinate Jim in his room. However, when Pope orders Hannah to shoot Martin, he hesitates and instead allows Martin to escape, seeking redemption for his past actions. Martin captures Jim and takes him to Ellie's house, where he begins to speak Irish, a language that Jim doesn't understand. This symbolizes Martin's defiance against British colonization and oppression in Ireland. Martin informs Jim that he will make him suffer, just as the Irish citizens have suffered under British rule. Martin seeks revenge for the injustices committed against his family and the Irish people. The following day, Hannah is being prepared for execution due to her treasonous actions against the British government. As she faces her death, a gunshot breaks the silence, catching everyone off guard. 
To everyone's surprise, Martin appears and attempts to save Hannah from her fate. Martin cleverly deceives Commander Pope and his men by using Jim's body as a decoy on a horse, allowing him to infiltrate the building and attempt to rescue Hannah. Using a trick he devised earlier, Martin shoots the gate and creates chaos by letting the hungry residents enter to find food, making it easier for him to escape. However, Martin is not able to make a clean getaway as he is shot by Gibson, who had previously killed Ellie's son. A fierce fight ensues between Martin and Gibson, with Martin avenging Ellie's son by killing Gibson. Amidst the chaos, Martin manages to meet with Hannah and they both decide to flee together and escape the dangerous situation they find themselves in. In the aftermath of the chaotic escape, Martin and Hannah find themselves fleeing from Commander Pope, who has secretly followed them. Desperate to catch up, Pope shoots Martin in the back, but Martin manages to keep going long enough to reach the end of the village with Hannah. Realizing that he won't make it, Martin stops Hannah and implores her to carry on his dream of going to America. He believes that America is a place where people like them can find freedom and a better life. As he takes his last breath, Hannah tearfully promises to fulfill his dream. The film ends with Hannah riding a horse and leaving the village behind. The final message appears on the screen, reminding viewers to remember all those who have been lost and never returned. The moral of the story is that always bring a first aid kit when planning to overthrow a government. The story demonstrates the importance of being prepared for unexpected situations, especially when it comes to one's own safety and well-being.